Hi guys, my name is Caitlin. I'm from grassfedgirl.com. Welcome to today's video. It's going to be all about carnivore challenges. So not everything is perfect and rosy and wonderful on the carnivore diet. I know I may have acted like that in the past, but today's video is going to be about five challenges that I'm still having on the carnivore diet. So stay tuned if that sounds interesting to you. Okay, so the first challenge is talking to other people about the carnivore diet. I think sometimes when we start out, we're really excited and we want to tell everyone because we've heard about it and we want to just get the word out about it and we're feeling good and so we want to talk about it. But the problem is that you're going to get a lot of rain on your parade. So it's best to just keep it to yourself at first because a lot of people have a, a lot of negative baggage around eating meat or they have a lot of baggage around uh fat, saturated fat, cholesterol, and they're going to dump all that on you. So you don't want to deal with other people's negativity because they don't know what you know. They haven't done the research. They haven't tried it. So I would just stick with saying I'm doing low carb. Um, I know my dad says I eat a lot of protein or I focus on protein or something like that. And you know, you want to stay away from those buzzwords that are going to be very charged. So um, just stick with something like low carb, even has less charge than keto, I would say. So um, I, I usually say that and people usually have some idea what that means and they don't go crazy about it. Uh, so I would just do that. And what you'll find is over time, people will come back to you and ask you what you're doing because they're going to notice how good you're looking, how good you're feeling, and they're going to want your secret sauce. So just hold it in for a little while do your thing, and then I bet you people will be knocking at your door wondering how you can help them. Okay, number two is weight loss. A lot of people uh, struggle with weight loss on the carnivore diet. And to be more precise, it's actually fat loss. So a lot of people don't lose weight right away. And um, I actually did. I actually lost about 20 pounds in the first two or three months that I did carnivore. So I did not have that frustration. Uh, and so that kept me really motivated. It kept me going. Um, I lost 10 pounds the first month and I have other videos about that. You can go back through my playlist, my carnivore 101 playlist and see my progress. Um, and, uh, but you know, who isn't more vain and wants to lose a little bit more? So I've kind of plateaued for a while and I would love to lose more. Um, I'm, I've toyed with the idea of going to all beef and water. I'm not really there yet. And, um, you know, maybe I'll do that at some point. Uh, you know, I've toyed with the Ted Naiman kind of idea of low fat, but I've done that before and I was super miserable. So, um, and you know, there's only so far I'm willing to go to have my aesthetic goals met. Um, I'm just not, I've done all that self-flagellation with exercise and all that stuff when I was younger. And, you know, there's just only so many things I'm willing to do at this age in my life and stage in my life. So, uh, you know, I'd like to lose more weight, but I also just go by how my clothes fit and how my blood work looks and how my doctor thinks about it. And um, I mean, I don't care what my doctor says about carnivore, but uh, as far as my blood work and everything, I'm super, super healthy. My A1C is really low and I just have a really good reports and I feel really good. So um, there's just only so far I'm willing to push myself with the weight loss thing. So I think other people are willing to go further with that, maybe more exercise maybe more, you know, strength training. Um, there's just a lot of other ways you can go about it. Fat, cutting fat, as I said, uh, but it's just not really things I'm willing to do right now, maybe in the future at some point, um, but that is a challenge, but I'm really happy where I'm at. So I'm just kind of being real about that. So the next challenge is constipation. So I don't have this problem anymore, but for several months of my first starting carnivore, I had problems with constipation, but it was always, 
it was already happening. So it just didn't resolve. It was happening from eating all the vegetables and all that stuff. So that is really why I started carnivore because I had constipation due to my slow thyroid, low thyroid. So um, when I started carnivore, it didn't immediately go away. And so some people might think that that is a challenge or a failure, um, but it took me a while of adding more and more and more salt to my diet, and then it finally resolved itself. So um, after about, for sure, about four or five months, I started to get everything dialed in, and now it's no longer a concern. So you could say that was a challenge at first, but it was a challenge left over from my old lifestyle of eating tons of vegetables, and I think I just had to do a lot of gut healing and then also getting my electrolytes dialed in, and what I mean by that is just taking two to three teaspoons of salt per day in addition to salting my food heavily. For me, that was enough. You may need to make an electrolyte drink or something like that, but I did not need to do that. Uh, I don't like drinking my salt. I like taking it in capsules. So you can get all my supplies down in my Amazon shop. Okay, kind of along those same lines is electrolytes. Electrolytes were a big problem for me, especially with my sleep. I could not sleep through the night if I didn't take enough salt. So I would take two capsules with double zero capsules full of salt right before bed. That was about a teaspoon. And that would usually get me through the night. But if I forgot the salt before bed, I would wake up in the middle of the night and sometimes have to take the salt in the middle of the night. And to me, salt is like a sleeping pill. For some reason, it just, because I will wake up, uh, have to pee, and then pee out all my electrolytes, and then have to go take more. And if I do that in the middle of the night, I will actually sleep. A lot of the time, I will sleep until 6 or 7. Um, so maybe I'd wake up at 3 or 4 and take the salt, and then I'd sleep until 6 or 7, which is perfect. So, um... If you are not sleeping well, it's probably electrolytes. So I guess this would be salt, sleep, and electrolytes is a challenge to get that all right. So definitely take two to three teaspoons of salt per day at the beginning in addition to salting your food and you'll probably start to feel better. And things will even out with both your digestion and your sleep. Okay, the final challenge I'm gonna talk about today is dairy. So I have tons and tons of problems when I drink dairy, I get super congested, I'll start to feel like I'm getting sick, I'll get like an earache, I'll get a sore throat, I will get inflamed. It is not the lactose intolerant feeling you might anticipate that I would say. Um, I'm not lactose intolerant per se, but it's more of an autoimmune type uh, reaction, an inflammatory reaction, and um, also get very bloated up, and I will gain weight when I eat dairy. So, um, but on that same <laughs> token, I get very, very crazy about dairy, and I love it so much. And my favorite food, especially when I was a kid, was mozzarella sticks, mozzarella cheese. I guess when I was older, I started eating fresh mozzarella. Um, I got a little more cultured, but um. So that is my favorite food. I would say maybe up there with ice cream. So um, that is kind of, you get an endorphin rush from dairy. Uh, it has caseomorphines, which is an addictive substance. So um, all that happens to me when I eat dairy. I love it so, so, so much, but I also feel very sick when I eat it. So not maybe immediately, but after a few hours, I will feel pretty bad, especially the next day. And um, earlier, if you watch my Instagram stories, on Instagram I made some, we've been stuck in the house due to the COVID-19 and I was just like losing it. So I made some ice cream in my uh, Cuisinart and I made it from scratch and I put a little bit of keto sweetener, but it was just vanilla and um, egg yolks and um, also cream of course. and. So the ice cream had egg yolks and some keto sweetener, but it just made me feel so, so awful the next day. And it took me about three days to feel normal again after eating that. Of course, I ate a lot because 
I can't stop when I start eating dairy. So I would say dairy is a challenge more, more so to me even than sweets. I could leave the sweets, but I love some heavy whipping cream. I love some cheese. Um, so that has been a challenge to stay away from that because it, it's hard because it is an allowed food. And I do have another full video about dairy and all the reasons why it's problematic. You can go and watch that one. But um, definitely dairy is a challenge on carnivore because it's technically allowed, but I know for me it doesn't work. Um, I've done some experimenting lately about goat cheese and it seems to definitely agree with my system more. So if you want me to do a video about my experience with goat cheese, just leave a comment down below and I will talk about how goat cheese affects me. And um, it's been a little better, spoiler alert. But anyway, um, so those are some challenges that you know are still lingering or that were not resolved right away. So it was um, dairy, uh, eating the... <sighs> so summing up, those were some challenges that were not immediately resolved or it took a little while to work themselves out and um, one was talking to other people about carnivore. We also had weight loss challenges. Constipation was a problem for the first several months. Electrolytes, getting those dialed in was a real challenge and making my sleep work better by taking electrolytes and then also the dairy was and is still <laughs> very challenging because I love it so much, but it doesn't love me. So, so tell me below what your challenges are with the carnivore diet. I would love to hear down in the comments. And if you haven't gotten my ebook yet, it is one of the things that I did because I wanted you to have all the tools and not face the challenges that I had over the first several months of doing carnivore. This dials it in. It's everything I've learned about doing carnivore. So you can get it at carnivore30.info. I really appreciate you watching my video today. And if you have any questions, you can leave them down below. And I try to answer all the comments. Please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and let me know what you want me to make my next video about. All right, see you next time. Bye-bye.